Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to January 8th uh, City Council meeting. Um, may we have a flag salute and a moment of silence? Uh, Councilor Gilman, would you do the flag salute, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, we're going to open the meeting with oral communications. The public shall have the opportunity to, at every regular scheduled meeting to be heard under oral communications on the matter not appearing on the agenda. Oral communications shall allow any resident who has a request or complaint of any nature relative to city business to appear before the city council, state their problems without debate, and the matter shall be referred to the proper agency through the office of the mayor. The resident will be notified within two weeks period relative to the disposition of the same. Any copy shall be forwarded to the City Council. Persons speaking under oral communications shall be limited to three minutes each. The Council President shall not allow complaints to individual preferences. Is there anybody who would like to speak at oral communication? Seeing none, uh, Madam Clerk, can I have the next order of business, please? Next order of business is the consent agenda. Uh, would anybody like to pull anything from the consent agenda? Uh, Councillor Nolan. Under reappointments, I'd like to pull off uh, Dick Wilson. Uh, he's going to be in Florida for an extended time, and we'd like to revisit this when he comes back. Anybody else? Uh, do we have a, cons uh, to, uh, a consent agenda to be accepted, amended? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Councilor Nolan? He's gonna, we're gonna continue it. He's not gonna be here. Okay, no problem. Uh, Madam Clerk, can I have the next order of business, please? The next order of business is the Budget and Finance Standing Committee Report of January 3rd, 2019. Councilor Cox? Thank you all. Budget and Finance voted unanimously to recommend that the City Council accept under Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A, a Massachusetts State FY 2019 Council on Aging Formula Grant allocation from the Mass Executive Office of Elder Affairs for a total of $88,848, and I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? This is an annual grant from the state with no match to fund personnel expenses for the senior center. Um, thank you. Uh, this is just a, um, not a roll call, so um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Budget and Finance voted unanimously to recommend that the City Council accept under Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A, a Massachusetts Seaport Economic Council grant for a total award of $110,000. The purpose of this grant is to fund projects and programs in support of the City of Gloucester's Gloucester Fresh Seafood Program, which promotes and markets the city's fresh seafood catch. This grant expires June 30th, 2020, and requires a 20% match, and I so move. Second. Motion has been seconded. Any discussion? The city is in receipt of a Mass Seaport Economic Council grant for the city's Gloucester Fresh seafood marketing and branding program for $110,000. The 20% match requirement is made up of $10,000 from the city's budget, traditionally used for the Seafood Expo. The Department of Marine Fisheries grant funding, which the city accepted in late spring of 2018, and additional in-kind services. The grant funds will support continue work of the Gloucester Fresh Seafood Program, exhibition space at the Seafood Expo North America, as well as marketing, 
branding, promoting of not only the city's sustainable seafood, but also for locally landed lobster, which is new this year. That's nice. Um, that's a nice chunk of change, 110,000 bucks. You know. okay. Yeah. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have it. Budget and finance voted unanimously to recommend that the city council accept under Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A, a state grant from the Massachusetts Cultural Council, a FY19 Cultural District Initiative grant in the amount of $5,000 for the purpose of supporting the virtual marketing efforts of the Rocky Neck Cultural District. The grant period is from July 1, 2018 to June 30th, 2019, and all the fin financial activity must occur prior to June 30th, 2019, and I so move. Second. Uh, motion has a second, any discussion? This grant funding will be used um, towards the Rocky Neck Cultural District's economic development. The cultural district will utilize the Essex County Creates calendar to drive all the cultural district's events and information into a central location online and use a digital media marketing campaign to increase awareness, drive traffic, and revenue to the organizations of the cultural district. Great. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Moving right along. Budget Thanks. and finance voted unanimously to recommend that the City Council approve Supplemental Appropriation 2019 SA 18 in the amount of $18,000 from receipts reserved for appropriation highway force fund transfers to the general fund account as noted to DPW Public Services Repairs and Maintenance Paving account as noted for the purpose of funding the repair and maintenance of the Lindale Avenue retaining wall and I so move. Second. Uh, any discussion? This is work to repair the Lindale okay. retaining wall. No problem. Uh, this is a roll call vote. Councilor Holgram? Yes. Councilor Blank? Yes. Councilor Memhard? Yes. Councilor Nolan? Yes. Councilor O'Hara? Yes. Councilor Cox? Yes. Councilor Gilman? Yes. Councilor Heck? Yes. The motion for 2019 SA 18 in the amount of $18,000 passes on a vote of eight in favor and one absent. Thank you, Councilor Cox. Budget and Finance voted unanimously to recommend that the City Council approve Supplemental Appropriation 2019 SA 19 in the amount of $600,000 from the Sewer Enterprise Fund undesignated fund balance account as noted to the Schoolhouse Road Sewer Infrastructure Improvements transfers in from the Sewer Enterprise Fund account as noted. For the purpose of funding Schoolhouse Road Infrastructure Improvements, the City of Gloucester's portion of the state grant funding for the same purpose. And I so move. Seconded. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? The work for the sewer infrastructure on Schoolhouse Road will mostly be funded by a $3 million mass grant, mass works grant, but in order to fund the city's portion of the proposed sewer infrastructure improvements, the city will need to take 6, 600000 from the Sewer Enterprise Fund certified free cash and move it to the newly created account within the Sewer Enterprise Fund specifically for the infrastructure work. The Mass Works award letter is received and the contract is being finalized, which the administration confirmed at the budget and finance meeting and is taking the step now to design, to begin the design work so they don't have to wait on the rest of the funding. Thank you. Uh, this is a roll call vote also. Council Holgram? Yes. Council Blank? Yes. Council Memhard? Yes. Council Nolan? Yes. Council Hara? Yes. Council Cox? Yes. Council Gilman? Yes. Council Heck? Yes. The motion for 2019 SA 19 in the amount of $600,000 passes on a vote of eight in favor, zero opposed, and one absent. The Budget and Finance Committee voted unanimously to recommend that the City Council approve Special Budgetary Transfer 2019 SBT 6 in the amount of $8,287.50 from the Sewer Enterprise Fund Bond Issuance Cost Account as noted to Sewer Enterprise Fund Capital Outlay Account as noted for the purpose of funding additional munis vendor implementation days to complete data conversion and train city staff, and I so move. And I so second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? No. Um, it's 
it's for more munis training mm -hmm. that's necessary to move to the next step. Great. Uh, this is not a roll call vote, so um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> all opposed? The ayes have it. Council Budget Cox. and Finance voted unanimously to recommend that the City Council approve Special Budgetary Transfer 2019 SBT 7 in the amount of $8,287.50 from the Water Enterprise Fund bond issuance cost account as noted to Water Enterprise Fund capital outlay account as noted for the purpose of funding additional Munis vendor implementation days to complete data conversion and train city staff and I so move. Second. Um, any discussion? This is equal parts of the funding that needed to um, be paid for Munis training. Um, it's to improve or to run the billing through Munis. So that's why 50% is coming out of water and 50% out of sewer. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Um, thank you, Councillor Cox. That's the end of budget and finance. You're welcome. Uh, Madam Clerk, next call of uh, next order of business, please. Okay. There were um, there was no meeting for the ONA on 1-1-2019. Uh, the P&D meeting of 1-2-2019. Uh, Councillor Gilman. Thank you. So there's no matters to report, but I do want everyone to know that we are having a site visit on Thursday at 2.30. There was a, um, it was incorrectly noted in the Gloucester Times. It was corrected on the bottom of page two today. We're meeting at Petco. It's to basically look at um, the drive-through areas and the pedestrian walkways and just the layout of the three special permits for Gloucester Crossing. So anyone is welcome to attend. There's no deliberation, but it's just for us to visualize and ask questions. Thank you. Great, thank you. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, next order of business, please. Next order of business is Public Hearing 2018-066, Special City Council Permit 2018-005, Gloucester Crossing Road number one and seven, map 262, lots 13 and 37 for a re Tail drive through pursuant to Gloucester Zoning Ordinance Section 1.5.3G, drive through facilities and Section 5.17 Special Regulations, drive through facilities in the EB District. Thank you. I'm going to open the public hearing and continue it to January 22nd, um, 2019. Uh, Madam Clerk, next order of business, please. Next order is Public Hearing 2018-067, Special Council Permit 2018-006, Gloucester Crossing Road, number one and number seven, map 262, lots 13 and 37, for a coffee shop drive through pursuant to Gloucester Zoning Ordinance, section 1.5.3G, drive through facilities in section 5.17, special regulations, drive through facilities in the EB district. I'm going to open the public hearing and continue it till January 22nd. Next order is public hearing 2068, Special City Council Permit 2018-007, Gloucester Crossing Road, number one and number seven, map 262, lots 13 and 37, for the modifications and reconfigurations of Building C and Building E, the replacement of the proposed hotel with additional retail, a reconfiguration of the parking fields to eliminate underground parking, and to comply with the requirements of two proposed drive-through facilities pursuant to Gloucester Zoning Order sections 1.5.3 C CCS special permits in D major projects and section 5.7 major project I'm going to open the public hearing and continue it till January 22nd uh, Madam Clerk, can I have the next order of business, please? Next order of business is public hearing 2019-001 to amend the Gloucester Code of Ordinances section Chapter 22, Traffic and Motor Vehicles, Section 22-283, Bus Stops and Taxi Stands by adding Lincoln Avenue westerly side in a southerly direction from a point 150 feet from Everson Avenue for a distance of 40 feet. I'm going to open the public hearing and ask if there's anybody to speak in favor. Seeing none. Anybody speak in opposition? Seeing none. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any communications? There are none. 
Do we have any counselor questions? Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing and ask for the committee report. Thank you, Mr. President. On a motion by Councillor O'Hara, seconded by Council Lundberg, the Ordinance Administration Committee voted three in favor, zero opposed, to recommend that the City Council amend GCO Chapter 22, Traffic and Motor Vehicle Section 22-283, Bus Stops in Taxi Stands by adding Lincoln Avenue Westley side in a southerly direction from a point 150 feet from Emerson Avenue for a distance of 40 feet, and I so move. Um, do we have any questions? Any comments? A uh, constituent who lives in the Lincoln Park complex approached Councillor LeBlanc and myself and uh, said that there were some safety concerns around the bus stop, especially in the wintertime. Uh, so Bob Ryan, uh, the chair of our traffic commission, kindly went and measured and uh, made some recommendations. And Councillor LeBlanc and I feel that this is appropriate to bring forward. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm going to support this tonight. Um, there is a covered bus stop on Lincoln Avenue, and uh, people are parking in front of the actual bus stop, so it's making it difficult for people to access the bus when it pulls up. Um, so that was the whole reason this came to came about. Um, I think it's just um, you know belts and suspenders at this point, making it a you know designated spot, not to, for, so people don't park in it. it. It really won't take up any parking on the street. Um, it's just that one spot to allow people to get in and out of the bus stop. Uh, we have a motion. We have a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Uh, Madam Clerk, next order of business, please. It's public hearing 2019-002, amend Gloucester Code of Ordinances, Chapter 22, Traffic and Motor Vehicles, Section 22-270, prohibited parking at all times by adding Chestnut Street, Westerly side from its intersection with Main Street for 150 feet in a northerly direction, parentheses to number six Chestnut Street and per I'm going to open the public hearing and ask for those to speak in favor. Um, seeing none, opposition, seeing none. Uh, do we have any communications, Madam Clerk? There are none. Uh, Councilor questions? Seeing none, I'm gonna close the public hearing and ask for the committee report, please. On a motion by Councilor O'Hara, seconded by Council Lundberg, the Ordinance Administration Committee voted three in favor, zero opposed, to recommend that the City Council amend GCO Chapter 22, Traffic and Motor Vehicles, Section 22-270, prohibited parking at all times by adding Chestnut Street westerly side from its intersection with Main Street for 150 feet in a northerly direction to number six Chestnut Street, and I so move. Uh, motion's been made and seconded. Uh, do we have any other discussion? Um, I'd just like to point out that this was brought to me and Councillor Hecht um, that there is the smallest amount of curb in between these two pieces of property. Uh, besides that little piece of curbing, um, they're both driveways for the taxi stand and a, and a residential property. Um, and it makes it difficult for the businesses and the residential property to uh, access their driveways when there are people parked in this little spot that is technically not a spot. So that's how this came about. Um, so that being said, uh, we have a motion, we have a second. All in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? Uh, the ayes have it. Okay, Madam it's Clerk. Okay, public hearing 2019-003, amend Gloucester Code of Ordinance, Chapter 22, Traffic and Motor Vehicles, Section 22269, Stop Intersections by adding Vulcan Street at its intersection with Emerald Street. I'm going to open the public hearing, uh, ask for residents speaking in favor, residents speaking opposed, uh, any communications? There are none. Thank you. Uh, Councilor questions? I'm going to close the public hearing and ask for the committee report, please. On a motion by Councilor Harris, seconded by Council Lundberg, the Owens Administration Committee voted three in favor, zero opposed, to recommend that C Councilman GCO Chapter 22, Traffic and Motor Vehicles, Section 22-269, stop intersections as follows, Vulcan Street at its intersection with Emerald Street, and I so move. Motion's been made and seconded. Um, any other discussion? 
All in, oh, Councillor uh, Councillor Gilman, sorry. Thank you. So I just wanted to um, speak in, in favor of this. It's important. There's a lot of commotion in business now at the Lanesville Community Center, and folks are leaving, heading that way, and not stopping at all at that T intersection. We've had a couple of close calls, and um, I reached out to the Lanesville Community Center board. They were in support. One of them wrote a letter of support, Ross Burton. I think we received that during the ONA meeting. It's just important. So um, I, I ask that you consider this as, as important and um, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, all stop signs should be important. Um, we have a motion. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. The ayes have it. Madam Clerk, next order of business, please. Public hearing 2019-004 to amend the Gloucester Code of Ordinances, Chapter 22, Traffic and Motor Vehicles, Section 22-269, Stop Intersections by adding Lookout Street at its intersection with Commonwealth Avenue, Lookout Street at its intersection with Beacon Street, Beacon Street at its intersection with Washington Street. I'm going to open the public hearing. I uh, ask for those to speak in favor, uh, those to speak in opposition. Uh, Madam Clerk, any communications? There are none. Are any councilor questions? I'm going to close the public hearing and ask for the committee report, please. On a motion by Council O'Harrick, seconded by Councilor Nolan, the Owens Administration Committee voted three in favor, zero opposed, to recommend that the City Council amend GCO Chapter 22, Traffic and Motor Vehicles, Section 22-269, stop intersections as follows. Lookout Street at its intersection with Commonwealth Avenue. Lookout Street at its intersection with Beacon Street. Beacon Street at its intersection with Washington Street. And I so move. Thank you. Uh, is there any other discussion? Um, I'd just like to say that I was contacted by a woman on Lookout Street that had an accident in the neighborhood and um, this is a few years ago when she was injured. Um, she was just getting around to reaching out to me to have the stop signs. Um, I took a ride through the neighborhood and I was surprised to see that there weren't any stop signs in the entire neighborhood. Um, so this is just kind of belt and suspenders to make sure the neighborhood is safe up there. Um, it's on top of the hill as we all know, so coming down, people should, should actually stop at an intersection. Um, so we have a motion, a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, Madam Clerk, next order of business, please. Next order of business is for council vote, special speed regulation number 7959 from the Mass DOT regarding Bond Street. Um, council O'Hara. On a motion by Council Blank, seconded by Councilor the City Council voted in favor, opposed to adopt Mass DOT Special Speed Regulation 7959 as follows. Bond Street northbound, beginning at the junction of Route 127 Western Avenue, hence northly on Bond Street, 0.67 miles at 20 miles per hour, ending at the junction of 133 Essex Avenue, total distance being 0.67 miles, and I so move. Thank you. Um, we've already voted on this. So this is just a, um, correct? Yeah, you just have to drop this. To adopt it, right, to send it out. To yeah. Thank yeah, you. it's just a motion to adopt because the Mass DOT already approved it and we need council signatures and just the adoption of it and All I right. certify it and send it in. It's been uh, moved, do we have a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, next order of business, please. Is the update of the Downtown Development Commission from City Council Representative Council Melissa Cox. Um, we haven't had a meeting in a month uh, due to some illnesses and the holidays. So uh, it will have to get back to you on an update at a later date. Very good. Thank you. Uh, next, we have the councillor's requests to the mayor. Um, we'll start on your side. Council Holmgren. I don't have any requests at this time. Thank you. Council Memhard. I would just like to 
second what we just did and, and affirm our good work towards cleaning up our city, intersection by intersection, street by street, stop sign by stop sign. That is, as you said, the nitty gritty of good governance. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Nolan, nothing tonight. Councilor Cox. I am happy to be representing the city of Gloucester at a climate leadership summit on Saturday in Andover. Um, so I look forward to sharing with you what I find out. Thank you. Councillor Hecht. Uh, just wanted to update, uh, Happy New Year everybody. Uh, and um, had a good meeting with Mike Hale, the DPW, and Generous Gardeners and some other folks. Uh, Simon Perdenzi, Colleen Anderson, with respect to the 18-inch high wrought iron planters from Main Street. So there's some momentum being gained there. And uh, Mike has also unveiled the desire of the mayor to have larger hanging plants uh, this summer. So this summer, if we uh, can swing it, it's going to be pretty spiffy downtown in terms of plantings. Thank you. We appreciate your enthusiasm downtown, seeing that you live down there. So it makes a big difference being downtown and helping, helping out. You get to see things a little bit uh, under a microscope better than us. Um, Councilor Gilman. Thank you, I have no request to the mayor, but I did wanna just make one um, small comment it's regarding the Dogtown nomination for the National Register of Public Historic Places. Um, over the holidays, I reached out to the um, chair of the Rockport Selectmen just to check in with them to find out when they were gonna be doing the public input process and they are in the process of putting it on the agenda for this month. So that is now in motion, and I think it's important that we all are aware if in the event folks from Rockport are asking us questions, um, they have their um, independent governance from what we have, um, and um, the selectmen have now put that in the queue. So just a point of interest I thought I would share with you all. Absolutely, thank you very much. Um, Councilor O'Hara. Thank you, I just have one request asking the mayor and the administration if they could potentially look at the um, cable television or television within Gloucester. I've gotten numerous calls about the increase, a massive increase on the Comcast uh, bills. Um, many of them are senior citizens uh, and we all know that they live on a limited budget. And so if the administration could potentially call and speak to our representative. Uh, also, January 14th, this coming week, we have a, another blood drive at the Magnolia Library. You can call 1-800-RED-CROSS. The Red Cross is in dire need of your blood, and if you're healthy, uh, I ask you to consider. Thank you. Thank you. I will make it a point to be there. Give some blood. They call me like every other day asking for blood. The Red Cross does. Um, I have one, it's not a request to the mayor, but I have a request to the councilors. So as we all know, this Thursday evening, we will be doing a um, celebrity bartending down at the Cape Ann Brewery. Okay. So I, I hope to see all of our councilors there this Thursday. And also I hope to see all of us councilors there throughout the Thursdays to support each other. So who are you benefiting I'm the last I am, sup my, my uh, charity will be supporting the Gloucester Veterans Center. So, and I think all of our, all of our um, charities are well-deserving. Um, so since this is, we go around the table and, and say what our night is and since you brought it up. So I, so start with Jen. We have time, sure, why not? Are you sure I don't want yeah, to Yeah, no, no, the, that's, that's perfectly there. fine. So we, we can say it and then we'll, we'll adjourn. On January 31st, I will be the guest bartender for Ocean Alliance and then uh, uh, Councillor Lundberg and I will be doing uh, a fundraiser for Wellspring House on February 7th and I have never poured a beer out of a tap or operated a cash register. So this should be entertaining. And I'm on uh, Thursday night, January 24th, and I thought long and hard about what groups would benefit from um, my bartending skills, and I decided that the best key to success was Maritime Gloucester, because I figured there were good beer drinkers over there, between the gig rowers and uh, everyone else at Maritime Gloucester. 
So uh, please join us on Thursday night, the 24th, and, and also congratulations to Jeremy Goldberg for his enterprise in uh, perking up the slow winter months at the brew pub with uh, the councillor's support on behalf of all these wor worthy causes. Thank you. Um, just so we know that the proceeds that evening, a percentage of all sales, not just food, it'll be from the bar and the sales, which is unique because a lot of places don't include the bar tab. So um, he's, I think he's going above and beyond to help our local charities. So um, we appreciate uh, Jeremy for doing that. Um, Councilman Nolan. On January 17th at the Cape Ann Brew Pub, I will be guest bartending. Um, I haven't bartended in quite some time, but, <laughs> but I'm fairly sure that we can handle this. Um, the proceeds from the 17th will be going to the Magnolia Pier uh, to help rebuild the uh, historic, most wonderful part of Magnolia. And uh, I think it's gonna be a great time, and I hope you all come. Please excuse my tardiness because we have budget and finance that night, but we will be there, I, I or I will be there. I think we do, I checked. Do, we? do you want me to just call it six. off? Okay. Um, so I have February 28th, which uh, my fundraiser is for Cape Ann Animal Aid, because you know, it's for the animals. Councilor Hecht. Uh, I have um, March 14th, and uh, we're going to be uh, helping out the Lobster Trap Christmas tree. Uh, every year they stress out about the money they need for the new bulbs and the this and the that and the other things. And they're also buying more safety equipment in terms of, you know, repelling equipment and helmets and stuff. Um, and we want to also, uh, there's a move going on with David Brooks and Sean Henry to create a website and, and generate a real pictorial history of the Lobster Trap Christmas tree, which has been going on since 2001. Uh, and it's quite a history of how it started and all. So it's really gonna, we're gonna blow up a little bit. I think that the tree has been more and more successful every year and it, people just, everybody loves it. And we're gonna try to kind of build on that and uh, get some funds in the door to, to do so. Thank you. Thank you. I think we have the most amazing lobster trap tree in the world. We do. Uh, Councilor Gilman. I am looking forward to being a guest bartender on February 21st, um, and I will be um, um, representing the Gloucester Education Foundation, of which I've been um, on the board. Now I'm a community council member, and when I was on the school committee, I was a liaison for six years. So um, it's a great organization, and I'm excited about that. And, uh, having graduated from UMass Amherst back in 79, when the drinking age was 18, I do know how to pour a beer very well. I think my peers would be proud of me, and I hope to see you sitting up at the bar saying, I want another beer, or if you don't want to come to drink beer, come and join the fun and have a nice dinner. So thank you. It's a great idea. Thank you, uh, Councillor uh, O'Hara. Thank you. I'll be um, March 7th, and the um, group that I'll be representing will be Pathways for Children, the wonderful establishment on Emerson Ave, and we hope everyone can participate in, um, with all of our, our fundraisers during the month of January, February, and March. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Like I said, I expect to see all the counselors at every event over the next couple of months. It's going to be fun. Um, and hopefully we can build off of this and get some momentum in the future and do similar things for future councils. So um, is there anything else we need? All right, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. We are adjourned. Thank you.